Hi, I am uh, Anu Wong Corey. I am the program chair of the GoTo conference in Copenhagen 2012 and also for GoTo Aarhus 2012. With me today is uh, the self claimed architect, Simon Brown. Would you like to introduce yourself? The self claimed architect. So I'm a, I'm a software developer and I also understand the importance of architectural projects. Uh, currently doing some freelance work and training, consulting, and things like that. Uh, ultimately, my role is to lead software projects and be the architecture role. Okay, thank you. So my first question for you is: Are you a software architect who can code, or are you a developer who is good at architecture? So when I when I started my career, I started off uh, coding, you know, taking instruction from people on the team, uh, and gradually evolved into doing high-level design and eventually into architecture. So, am I an architect who does coding, or am I a developer who understands architect? For me, they're kind of both really the same thing, and it just depends on your perspective of the world. I, ideally, we'd have a bunch of people on the team who knew how to do both. That's how we get to our sub-organizing teams with technical point of view. Do you think it's possible to get that bunch of people who can do both? It's possible for some developers. Um, in, the, in the talk I gave, there was a really good question saying that some people do more and be more interested in what they do. For others, yeah, I don't see why not. I don't see why we can't educate software developers to become more architecturally aware. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at you know, cross-cutting concerns, performance, scalability, availability, deployment, monitoring, all those sorts of aspects. Yes, because that was actually my next question. Can you, can you teach people to become software architects, good software architects? So the, the first thing to get people to do is to step back and see the bigger picture. Yeah. So most of the time as developers, we're locked into our, our IDs, we're looking at lines of code, and refactoring and design patterns and unit testing and, and all that cool stuff. And as developers, that's exactly where our focus needs to needs to be in order to write software. Mm -hmm. The architecture role is about stepping back from the IDE and, and really looking at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is, you know, if you start from a, a, a kind of clean sheet of paper, it's what are the constraints of the environment? How do we how does what we build fit into the environment? It's about the non-functionals, the cross-cutting concerns, it's all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So Kind of lesson number one is step back and see the big picture and some people can do that and some people can't and that's really the kind of make or break time for me mm -hmm. and the people who can't do that you can't teach them to do that in the same sense as people who see the broad picture can't be taught to be 180 percent right. programmers because they can't be that efficient in the detail yes yeah. it's just a question of how you will hardwire it right so some people like the detail and yeah. they get stuck in the detail and that's mm -hmm. fine we need people like yeah. on the team yeah. and other people you know, can only see the high level picture. Mm -hmm. We kind of need both. Now, ideally, if we're looking for a single individual on the team yeah. to undertake the architecture role, the technical team lead role, then they need to be able to do both. Yeah. Often at the same time. Ideally. Which is hard. Yes, of course. So, um, a personal question Why are you interested in software architecture and not, say, developing programming languages? So, uh, there are a lot of smarter people out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we saw the, the keynote this morning, Rich Hickey. Closure, you know, all of those cool languages. I, I'm not that sort of person. Um, I, I like using those sorts of languages, but I, I'm not a language designer. Uh, I do have an interest in programming languages and technologies and frameworks, and, and that's my, my kind of background. So I've, I've written books in the past on uh, Java Enterprise Edition and JSPs and servers and things like that. My reason for being interested in architecture is that, you know, currently we're seeing lots of teams adopting Agile, mm -hmm. and Agile is buying them lots of great things. And we're seeing the craftsmanship movement, which is about high quality code, professionalism, and so on and so forth. But projects are still failing yeah. through, you know, performing too slowly, not being yeah. scalable, available, and so on. So there's a the there's a need, yeah, the non-functional yeah. requirements. Yeah. So there's a need for somebody to mm -hmm. undertake that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and has it become worse with the agile? I remember that when XP entered the stage, we, we said, well. We don't need any software architecture anymore. We don't need any big blueprint plans. And then they sort of loosened it up and said, maybe you need a metaphor or something. Think of it as a ship or a building or something like right. that. Yeah. And now we have the Agile, which is, they're sort of coming towards uh, maybe appreciating architecture, but not really. So what do you think? Is, is the Agile thing ruining those non-functional plans? It's, uh, it's not ruining it, but it's definitely taking focus away from what teams would have done in the past. Mm -hmm. So if you look back 10 years, we had a rush unified process, you know, big, heavy process yeah. framework, but it gave you a set of steps yes. to go through. It gave you a, a vision, a shared vision. Right, yeah. of, of the process. Yeah. You know, look, 10 years prior to that, SSADM mm -hmm. and yeah. other structured methodologies. Yeah, yeah. Now with Agile, because we're 
tweaking and defining and changing the process, mm -hmm. you know, we are thinking a lot about the process and not about what mm -hmm. we're actually building. Mm -hmm. So I think there's been a tendency for people to kind of forget yeah. all the stuff that they should be doing and have been doing historically, yeah. which is why we kind of have this need now. And, and, and there's a sweet spot 